guys, and welcome back to your Thursday pregame edition of Daily Iowan TV. Up first, we take a look inside the numbers for this week's matchup as the Hawkeyes take on the newest Big Ten edition, the Maryland Terrapins. The Iowa Hawkeyes will face the Maryland Terrapins come game time Saturday, a team Iowa has never seen before. The leading threats for the Terps offense comes from six-year quarterback C.J. Brown and wide receiver Stephon Diggs. Quarterback, uh, outstanding young man from Pittsburgh who hopefully has all the injuries behind him now, had a good year last year, and we expect big things out of him this year. Both Diggs and Brown produced giant numbers in yardage this season and remain the leaders in touchdowns. Maryland's passing attack averages around 259 yards per game, but compared to the Iowa offense putting up a whopping 45 points against the Hoosiers and increasing their rushing yards in the past five straight games, this side of the ball seems pretty evenly matched. They're definitely really good. It's going to be a challenge, you know, defensively, just because, you know, the different threats that they have, uh, the different formations that they have. It's going to put us in a bomb, but I think we're going to be up for the challenge. The red zone will be the key to dispersing the points on the board with Iowa converting nine of their 12 fourth downs and Maryland standing perfect with five fourth down conversions and their defense leading the Big Ten in the red zone. Our skill positions really are, um, I would stand out, you know, as far as right now. Um, our receivers, running backs, and secondary, I think we're all pretty deep as far as um, depth and, and what we bring to the table. But Maryland, with eight interceptions, might want to rethink their passing game due to an impressive secondary on the Iowa defense, recording eight interceptions this season. Amongst the linemen also stands Louis Trinkabasat and Andre Malone, who rank first and second, respectively, in most tackles in the Big Ten. Maryland is coming off their bye week well rested, and the Hawkeyes will have to travel to College Park for this matchup. Iowa is on a three-game winning streak, trying to capture another win to become bowl eligible. We really do have the confidence that uh, that we can come into uh, this conference, you know, obviously taking it one week at a time, but um, we can we can make an impact. While Maryland is over 900 miles away, it is a trip some Hawkeye East Coasters are excited to make. That's right, Whitney, and we caught up with a couple Hawkeyes to explain the best part about living close to the water. Um, we have good seafood out there. It's right by the water, so um, we got crabs, we got lobsters, shrimp. It's pretty good seafood. I just like the regular Joe's Crab Shack, but <laughs> I mean, I, I love crabs and I love lobster. I love uh, shrimp, so. Anywhere that serves those three, I mean, I'm there, but uh, yeah, I'm just excited to go back home and, you know, well, closer to home and have my family and high school coach finally see me play, so uh, it's a pretty big week. While some players are excited to travel to Maryland, they know they still have a game to play. The Terps, known for their passing attack, average over 200 yards a game. But one Hawkeye making a name in the all-time leading receptionist list is wide receiver Kevontae Martin Manley. I caught up with him earlier this week. All right, Kevante, so you lead Iowa with 29 receptions, even though there are so many different threats on the receiving core. How does your role differ from the other guys? Um, you know, just playing that leadership role, um, you know, talking to guys, um, trying to up their play and, uh, you know, just motivating them to, uh, you know, keep playing hard and, and keep playing better. So the focus is really not on how many catches I'm getting. It's just, um, you know, upping everybody's play and uh, playing to the best of our ability. Now, 23 catches away from breaking Iowa's all-time uh, reception record set by DJK. Does that bring a little bit of added pressure or kind of in the back of your mind your senior year? Yeah, it definitely. I wouldn't say pressure, but um, it's kind of a little bit of anxiousness. Uh, you know, I really want to, it's something that I, I want to get, but right now our focus is, uh, you know, winning the rest of our games and, uh, you know, guys just playing to the best of their ability. All right, and finally, Terrapin's defensive back, William Likely, has two interceptions and totaled eight passes defensive this season. How are you guys going to continue to make plays against him and the rest of their secondary? Um, you know, just work, being uh, detailed in our routes and things like that, um, getting open and just uh, playing fast and playing hard, um, we feel like we'll be all right. All right, well, thank you so much. Another man making an impact, but on the defense for Iowa is cornerback Desmond King. Last season, King was one of the first true freshmen to start in the secondary position for Iowa in over a decade. Now King has established his place on the turf and is known as one of the most entertaining players on Iowa's backfield. Jalen Socek has a story. Desmond King never imagined taking over at the cornerback position, at least not right away. But that's exactly what happened when then starting cornerback Jordan Lomax suffered a hamstring injury in the opening game against Northern Illinois. As a true freshman, King accounted for 69 tackles, the most of any Big Ten freshman. King has since then taken over at the cornerback position, sticking around for 18 consecutive starts. I was saying a year ago I wasn't very experienced, things like that, so I was just in the process of learning. I'm still learning. I mean, it's, it's very helpful just 
having that early experience as a freshman and then just carrying on to the sophomore year. Halfway into the 2014 season, King is sitting at 29 tackles. And last week against Indiana, King made the biggest play of his young career, picking off Hoosier QB Nate Sudfield in the first quarter and running it in for a 35-yard touchdown, a play he says he knew was coming his way. We've been watching that play um, all week, all week long on Indiana. And once, once every, uh, every time the quarterback would look to the sideline, they would get a check. We would look to our sideline, and Coach, Coach uh, Parker would give me a key. He would just read your keys and things like that. And so he gave me like a heads up. I read my keys, and it was the play that I thought it would be. It was just an exciting moment when I finally touched the ball, first interception, first touchdown after I scored. So it was an amazing moment. After his first pick six, it's no question that the sophomore's confidence has boosted. Probably at an all-time high for real. You know, he's playing, he's playing out of his mind. You know, the whole defense is playing good as a whole, so we just got to keep it up. And his confidence that radiates off King on the field, making him one of the most exciting players on the Hawkeye roster to watch. This is just a matter of confidence, like I was saying, putting all the receivers in the same category, knowing that I have to defeat this person. So once I do it, it's like I knew I was going to do that. All the experience under King's belt has developed him into a leadership role in his position. This is Jalen Sochuk, Daily Island TV Sports. Kickoff for the game on Saturday starts at 11 Central Time in Bird Stadium. Be sure to pick up a print copy of the Daily Iowan pregame tomorrow and stay updated throughout the game at our sports blog at dailyiowansports.com. Before we let you go, Hawkeye Hoops action was underway in Rosemont, Illinois, hosting the Big Ten Basketball Media Days. For a preview, I'll toss it over to Jalen Socek with a recap of the event. Thanks, ladies. Big Ten Basketball Media Day wrapping up earlier today, and a lot of excitement from players and coaches to get this season started. Wisconsin receiving all the love today as they're the early favorite to win out the season, and coaches talk about the impact that Rutgers and Maryland has on the schedules this year. And for extended coverage of today and what the coaches and players had to say, be sure to check out Daily Island TV this Sunday night. Reporting from Rosemont, Illinois, I'm Jalen Socek.